What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the emulation performance of the all new Nvidia Shield TV. Now I call this the 2 version. I just posted an emulation video on the Pro version, so if you're interested in checking that out, link will be in the description. So overall, this is a $150 device. We still have that new Tegra X1 Plus processor, but we have two gigs of RAM. And one very important thing about this, it's only running in 32-bit mode, so you cannot run 64-bit applications like the Dolphin emulator. And the only way to expand the storage on this device is a micro SD card. So I'm going to be running all of my games from a 256 gigabyte micro SD. It works fine here. And performance on this device is actually exactly the same as the Pro version, except it's running in 32-bit mode, so those 64-bit apps will not work. I will need a game controller to play all these games properly, so I'm going to be using the Xbox One controller. This is a Bluetooth controller, and it'll connect right to the NVIDIA Shield. Now, even with the cheaper tube version here, you still get the AI upscaling, and you get that new remote. It's actually a decent Android TV box, but how well does it handle emulation? In this video, we're going to be testing out some N64, some PSP, some Dreamcast, and Sega Saturn. I also threw a couple PS1 games in here because I had a couple people asking about it. Like I said, unfortunately we just can't test the Dolphin emulator, but I'm pretty sure performance would be about the same as the Pro version if this was running a 64-bit operating system. So before we get into testing, there are a few things that I want to go over. I'll be using LaunchBox to start all of my games here. Now they'll be using different emulators in the background. LaunchBox is just a launcher, but as you can see here, it looks really great on the Shield. And more features are coming soon. The next thing I always do to my NVIDIA Shields is go to Device Preferences, System, Processor Mode, make sure it's set to Max Performance, and the Fan Mode, set to Cool. Yes, this tube version does have a fan inside of it. I actually took this thing apart and it looks really awesome. If you're interested on like a teardown, just let me know in the comments below. For each one of these games tested in this video, I will have the name of the game and the emulator I'm using on screen so you know what's going on at any given time. So let's go ahead and get right into it. First up, we have Conker's Bad Fur Day for N64. So here we have Moop N64 plus FZ from the Google Play Store. I'm set at 800 by 600 with these games here, and I only tested a few because N64 ran well on the original Shield, and as you can see, it runs really great on the new ones also. Next up, we have some PSP using PPSSPP at 3x resolution. Same performance as the Shield Pro, so this little guy will handle PSP just fine. Press the X button while crouching to do a high jump. If you need more ammunition, try purchasing it at a Gadgetron vendor.
Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator upscaled to 1920 by 1440 had no issues whatsoever on the tube version of the Shield. Same thing goes for the new Shield Pro. This emulator works amazingly on these Tegra chips. PlayStation 1 is a non-issue on a lot of lower-end devices, but I did have a few people asking me about it, so I figured I'd go ahead and test it here. This is PC SX Rearmed in RetroArch, Bloody Roar 2, one of the harder games to get running at full speed, and we're at a constant 60. So PlayStation 1 emulation on the new shields or the old one is no problem at all. And finally, Sega Saturn using Yoba San Shiro. Now this is the Retro Arch Core, but I also tested the standalone version if you're into that. I prefer the Retro Arch Core, but it runs great on this device. So in the end, the new Shield TV performs just like its predecessor. Unfortunately, we're not running in 64-bit mode, so those higher-end emulators like Dolphin will not even install on this. But if you're looking for lower-end stuff, anything from Atari 
all the way up to, as you saw, Dreamcast and even N64, will be no issue at all for the tube version of the NVIDIA Shield. Now, in my opinion, I think it's a little overpriced for what we're getting here. It retails for $149.99. If they could have knocked this down to $99 or $119, it would have been a steal. But at $150, I think you'd be better off buying an older version Shield, either used or new in box from eBay or a local retailer. Either way, the device works quite well with emulation and is pretty awesome with video playback also. If you're still interested in picking one of these up, I will leave links in the description. If you have any questions at all or you want to see anything else running on either of the new NVIDIA Shields, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.